Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Bob Stewart. Ken Granger is with me today. Ken, how you doing, friend? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm good. So I'll bring Ken on and properly introduce him here in just a second. Uh, before we get started, I want to I wanna ask everybody, how are you doing? So go, go find the questions area right now on your GoToWebinar control panel. And as we go through today's today's call, you guys can ask us whatever questions you want in that area. I'll have you find it right now so you know where to go here in a little bit when when Ken says something just ridiculously intelligent. And you're like, wait a minute, can you say that again? You'll know where to go type that. Um, I go, Just check in right now, find that area. Just tell me, like, how are you guys feeling, right? I mean, it's a, so Todd's in Tacoma, Washington. He's really close to kind of our epicenter here, right? He says, he's doing well. John is maybe a little bit, um, Todd maybe gave us the like, was that the manufactured answer, Todd? Like the what I feel like I'm supposed to say? John was just real, wasn't he, Ken? I don't know if you can see it. He's scared and worried, John said. Judy said careful, um, sometimes strong. What does Heather say? Sometimes strong, sometimes struggle. Yeah, yeah, I think he does that to us, right? But um, listen, one of the things that we're trying to do here is that Ken, I think, would echo this for me is, this is a time when people kind of, you bring to, to, to your community, whatever that is, right? In our case, it's the real estate community, like things you're good at. You, 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 you contribute by like sharing your talents. Not that Ken and I are talented, by the way, but one of the things that we've kind of trained ourselves on is, is talking to people and helping educate real estate agents about their business, about the tools they use in their business, about today websites. Uh, both of us have, well north of a decade each of experience doing this stuff with with websites and branding and so that's what we're going to do today we're going to try to bring you some of our kind of talents i think for you guys um when you've got the when you're overwhelmed you've got mixed emotions it's super odd uh nine i totally agree you guys have to think of what, what are your talents that you can bring back to your community right your your um your past clients your sphere so we're we're gonna we're gonna wrap that around your website and how your website might help you bring things back to right the people in your community that need something from you. And look, you guys aren't doctors and nurses, right? Those those people are at the front lines, but the people's homes are right now in these uncertain times, for most people, their biggest asset, right? And so there's a lot of uncertainty, just like we have uncertainty around our business. Your clients have uncertainty around their homes. And so Look, a lot of the things we're going to talk about today, Ken, I think, that they're going to be good whether we're in these crazy times or, or when we come out of the other side of these crazy times, right? A few of these things are actually going to be things I think your clients are like interested in in, in, the, in the face of this uncertainty. There's one thing I'm thinking of particularly, but um, so, all right, you guys, you guys figured out where to go and check in. I'm chuckling at some of these answers. Kelly says she might be going crazy. She has a teenager at home for the next 32 days. <laughs> Kelly, I'll put your teenager up against a two and a three-year-old, and then let's let's check notes the 30 days from now and see who's going more crazy. <laughs> uh, all right, Ken. So flip, now Ken's going to move to the next slide, which I'm just glad he didn't put my face big next to his face big, although Josiah, I think, built this deck. Ken. This is Ken. Uh, he's much better looking than me. He's he's much w more well dressed than I am. Um, so thankfully they didn't they didn't throw me up. But Ken, um, I'll, I'll just give a brief introduction. So Ken is the the founder and, and CEO of Brandco, which is a, a branding company that helps agents really not not just like create a logo. I hear a lot of people think, oh, branding, it's my logo, but but really create like a cohesive brand that that differentiates you in the market kind of based on who you are and what you bring to the market. So I'm super excited to have Ken on the call today with me. Ken, do me a favor, just introduce yourself, give a little background, how long you've been in the industry and and um, and then share, kind of transition into what we're gonna talk about today. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I've i been around the block a little bit. We actually celebrated our 20th anniversary last June. Wow. So we're coming up on uh, 21 years here in June. Um, and you know, to your point here, you know, we work with agents a lot on building their brands and a lot of things that we're going to be talking about today are for this new economy that we've just found ourselves thrown into. But this is stuff that 
um, I think was coming regardless of the changes in the economy. And um, I think this is really good time to have the conversations because folks are a little bit nervous or unsettled about what's going on in the real estate world. Um, and I'm excited to bring this content out because I think that it's just perfect timing. A lot of us are sitting at home. We've got some time to work on this and uh, I'm here to help people work through it, whatever questions they have on the call for sure and afterwards as well. Um, we've been doing this a very long time and, and this conversation is a long time coming and just the perfect time to have it. Cool. So, uh, All right. So what are we going to yeah. talk about? We're going to we're going to dive into some websites and yeah, I, you know, I I, I want to kind of give like a thirty thousand foot overview of of what agents should be looking at when they're when they're looking at their website and their online presence. And I, I think the the world has shifted online a little bit. And the first topic that we're going to talk about is really making your your website focused on your client. I see so many real estate websites out there, especially from you know five, six, seven years ago. If it's been a while since you worked on your website, where it was all about the agent, and you know there were, um, gosh, years ago I remember being at some of the the uh, NAR shows and some of the the bigger uh, trade shows, and they had you know these website companies and branding companies that were building slogos and they were making it all about you, and the agents were standing in power poses next to their name, and it was just this very agent centric and agent focused message about their brand and, and it really was kind of trying to paint the agent as the hero and i think in the new economy especially in the digital world it's not so much about you uh, as the agent but it, it it's about making the whole thing about your client and whether that is you know from your website to um your your social media profiles all of those things really should be focused about making your client the hero not necessarily you the agent the hero and the more that you can do that and, and make your clients the hero, the more successful you'll be and the farther your message will reach. Uh, when you're just bragging about yourself, people tune out. But when you're telling a story about how uh, you know a family found their dream home or some folks uh, downsized and retired to their, you know, uh, I'm looking at a, a picture of, a, of some Adirondack chairs overlooking a lake. Like when you tell a story that you help someone achieve those dreams and make your client the hero, you're much more successful in real estate and, and online as well. So I, that starts, roll this next slide here because you have a, you have Trulia here. And look, the, the big brands, Zillow, Trulia, like realtor.com, like love or hate these brands. They spend a bunch of money on, <laughs> on talking to consumers and figuring out like exactly what they, they want. Right. And so even when you just hit these websites, you can see that the focus is on like here, right. Discovering where they'll love to live. Like it's, and this is subtle, I think. I think a lot of agents, you don't, you don't walk around every day like with your brain thinking at this level, but like these subtle messages that these big brands have spent a lot of money trying to figure out what resonates with consumers. The, the reason you see this, again, instead of like that power pose of the agent and hey, we can help you find a house or um, th th there's some subtlety in this, in this Ken, right? I, and I think that's what's required is is making these subliminal tweaks and adjustments uh, and making it super subtle, but but also telling the story of what you're hearing. Like you're a facilitator, you're a you're a guide in this whole home buying process, and you're the happy accident after they find the home that they're looking for. You you, you know you're kind of the the behind the scenes person. And if we look at truly a here, and and you can do the same if you look at uh, Zillow or Realtor.com. You're going to say that, see the same thing. It's putting the family that you're hope you're helping first, um, and you see like you know walking the dog, the family on the porch. Like you're putting those people first, and that's something that everyone should be doing. Is is looking at your website and and asking yourself just from this first screenshot, without scrolling, without going anywhere, who's the subject of this story? And if it's you and not your potential buyer or seller, you have some changes you need to make. The the one of the like what immediately something you said in there like how many of you guys on your website and maybe just check in for us right now like how many of you guys on your website now not a not a um, testimonial we'll we'll talk about those in a second but how many of you guys like have anything on your site that's like a written story of somebody that you helped like that you helped right that you helped transition in life that you helped find that new house because they just had a baby that you helped downsize because the kids just moved out like how many of you actually have a written story like that 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 shows you having helped somebody fulfill their their goal because i think that's such a big part of what we do in real estate is is you guys help families like 
fulfill that goal, right? That housing goal, whatever it might be, buying a buying their first investment home, or um, or, or again, you know, helping that family who who needed that extra bedroom. Like to me, those are really powerful stories. One of the people, and this this isn't necessarily on his website, although I wouldn't probably be that surprised if he didn't have something like this on his website. There's a, an agent named Sheldon Neal. He's a Remax agent out of uh, New Jersey, and he does something on Facebook where every time he helps a family get into a, a new house, he he posts this kind of cool photo of it. He's always hiding somewhere in the background and and then tells a little bit of a story of like who they were and 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 what this house kind of meant to them. And Heather's like going, wow, eye opener. Um, like I, I, I think um, the testimonials, they, they can tell that story sometimes, right? If you got a really good one, but like there's a lot more that goes into somebody's story than just their testimonial. And I think that, you know, having like, if I was going to help somebody downsize and I'd written a really awesome story and I had a page on my website that was the story of the Smiths how, and how we helped them downsize, I, you know, that could really resonate with somebody more than just a, you know, a testimonial of the Smiths saying, hey, you know, they, they really helped us downsize, right? I mean, a full page that had pictures of the Smiths, you know, moving day. And I mean, I, I think there's a lot that somebody could do around just that idea of like how I've helped my clients. I don't know, man, I'm, I'm probably off path for you here, Ken, but that really just like popped in my head for some reason. No, you're definitely not. And I heard you say, you know, story five or six times in there. And, and that's what people connect to, right? Like, especially in these times when we're all just like, like just burdened with the news and all that's going on in our world and the economy, like we escape to story. And a lot of times I've heard, I think it was Ben that said, you know, people are either making babies or looking for homes online, right? So like people are home, they're watching the news, they're all this doom and gloom. But when they go into like real estate mode and dreaming about a new home, this is an emotional thing for them. And we're all talking about it as a transaction. And, you know, we're talking about it as a lead and we're talking about all these technical things. But the reality is that story communicates emotion. And really that's what it's all about for these people. Those life events that you mentioned, the upsides and the downsides and the baby, those are emotional things. And if you can communicate that via story, you have an instant connection with that visitor on your website. And even, even if it's not a thousand words, like a lot of times we'll tell people like, let's write a story and you know, they get paranoid that they're gonna have to write. But if we look at this image of Trulia, there's a story going on there. And in, in a sentence, right? Discover the place you'll love to live. We've got you know, a kid walking the dog, we've got a family on the porch. Like there's story being told via imagery. And I think that's what our team's really good at is, is telling those stories without necessarily having to write it all out. Um, you can communicate a lot visually and create that emotion before somebody even clicks or scrolls on your website. And making it about them and their journey and their story and what their dreams are be much more successful than you know bragging about how awesome you are as an agent. Unless you're a sociopath, I feel like this image like has to just subconsciously it softens you a little bit right like yeah. when you land there it just it just i don't know i'm i'm pretty tense all the time maybe but like it makes your shoulders <laughs> kind of sink down a little bit right like oh okay or right I can see something there yeah. yeah. And, and we've got, you know, the, the obvious kind of things, calls to actions to get started to buy rent or, you know, see what's sold. You can put your area that you live in there. Like, so we're moving the person along that journey, right? We're not just there, you know, telling an emotional story and trying to well up their eyes. We're like, we're ready to go. Like, let's get into real estate and let's get you moving. And, and hopefully, um, you know, from a technical perspective, hopefully we can um, earn some, some trust with you and convert you into a lead. You can also see a little further down. It's, you know, how can truly a help Right. Using some of those real simple words, you're helping someone along this journey makes a really big difference. This next slide that you have is something where it's like, I think on the surface, you think, oh, this is all about the agent. But the reality, <laughs> uh, go ahead, flip to the next one. The reality yeah. of what they're doing there is what? It's, I mean, they're kind of wrapping what they do around the idea that we're doing it for you, right? Absolutely. Right. So a lot of people will get really braggy about their numbers. But if we look at how this section was positioned, they're able to kind of tout how great of a team. And I stole this from Ben's website. Hopefully he doesn't mind um, how, how big of a team that they are and how successful they are at, at helping their clients. Right. And they 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 flip the script instead of, you know, being all braggy about how awesome we are. And they said no one does more to market your home. And if you're a seller. Right. You're especially in these times, you're really concerned about, you know, is it the right time to sell? Uh, am I going to get the best, you know, the best price? All those questions are going on here. And 
this brings confidence. The statement brings confidence. Nobody does more to market your home. And now there's some proof right behind it. 2,300 homes, $3 million spent on marketing listings. Like, holy cow, I can't even do the math, like how much they spend to market one listing. But that's impressive, right? And then it's get in touch, right? It's not some, you know, salesy, like, you know, find out how much your home is worth type thing. It's much softer. And of course that get in touch is a lead capture, but it's done very, very well. The the Ken because Ken is a super humble guy he won't he would never tell you guys this but um, you know Ben has been partnered with Branco for a while and, and has worked with these guys and th these words didn't just fall off the the back of the turnip truck right like <laughs> Ben worked with Ken and his team to like to really craft the message of how of how we you know we tout what we do and on Ben's team that's a lot right and the numbers are really substantial but like that we do it in a way that's that talks to people doesn't talk about us right it, yeah. it speaks to them about their needs not about like how we can help them and how like you said i think earlier you know we're the hero here we're, we're not we do this on behalf of our clients and we're really darn good at it so i mean that's that's really what this is saying but it's it's putting the customer at the front of the journey and not necessarily the agent one of the things i was thinking about here ken because not everybody has crazy numbers like these but a lot of you guys might have the ability to like leverage the numbers of your market center or your office, right? So like I wouldn't, if, if I was a, a newer agent getting started and I didn't, you know, and last year I did you know, 12 houses, I would probably use the story of my office. Um, and, and I think that that's fine that, you know, you would, you could say, you know, we sold X number of homes and, you know, from our, from our, um, our company last year, like, that's okay to to find a way to make these numbers work for you. You don't want to be a liar, right? But it, it, it wouldn't be a lie to go out and say like our office helped, you know, 2,300 people or however many your office helped, right? So you might not be able to get these kind of crazy eye-popping numbers that like we see here from a Ben Kinney team, right? But figure out a way that you can, you can create that, again, it's a story, right? That you can create that story around your business. And that might be, you, know, you might be doing it at an office level. For sure, I think that's a great idea. And um, the um, there are other ways other than numbers to communicate this. So if you're struggling a little bit on you know how you're going to communicate your value proposition as it comes to like your experience or how you're going to support the transaction, uh, shoot shoot me an email, reach out to me on social. We can help you craft that message. It doesn't have to be numbers, but I just think this was a really good execution of that using the numbers. Agreed. Cool. So the next one that I want to talk about, and we're going through five of these topics, and then we're going to get into some like live website reviews. Um, some of you all submitted your websites um, in the uh, registration for the webinar, and we're going to go through those live. So I hope that you all stick around for that, because I think that's where the true learning is. When we see the real world examples, it's really cool to like have these slideshows and, and, and see the kind of prepared stuff. But when we go live and we see the real world stuff, it gets really eye opening. So I hope everybody sticks around for that. Um, so the next thing that I want you guys to be thinking about when you're looking at your website, and a lot of folks have been maybe neglecting their website or it's not been as important in their business because they've got a lot of referrals going on or maybe they're not getting leads from their website and they're thinking that it's not important to them. But I want people to think about building your website for credibility and not for SEO or search engine optimization. And I see it here so many people, especially the, the either the larger teams or some mega agents out there that are saying, you know, I'm a referral only business. I don't need to look at, you know, I don't need to worry about my website where I never get leads from my website. I, I do my business by referral. I think that is the biggest uh, mistake that agents can make is that they're not looking at their website as a tool to build credibility. And what I mean by that is, is if you're a referral by referral only agent, when your business card gets handed out or your name gets dropped at a party or some one of those activities happen where you get, you know, where that referral is being passed, you don't even know that's happening. I mean, hopefully that's happening like just organically at parties and other events that people are saying, yeah, you really should use this agent. The well, not parties thing, anymore, Ken. Right now yeah. it's happening on Zoom calls. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, right. Social distancing, we got to change that for the new economy. But the reality is the first thing that that potential customer or client's going to do when they get that information is they're going to look you up online, right? They're going to stalk you a little bit. And if your website is a templated website, if it's a non-responsive website, meaning that doesn't work on mobile, or if it's something that you haven't touched in the last 10 years, you're communicating to these potential customers a message that you don't even know you don't even have the chance to recover because they're making a judgment about you behind the scenes because they're looking at your website and 
I think in the new economy, we shouldn't be building the website thinking that we're going to have this giant lead magnet that, you know, we're going to be on the first page of Google and people on the other side of the internet are going to find us. We should be building the website for saying, you know, hey, if, if my friends or family were to be Googling me, do I have my best foot forward there? And is that message compelling enough that they would pick up the phone and call me? And then if your friends and family won't do that, how will strangers do that from the other side of the internet? Ken, I had a, I had, I had this conversation with a guy at the, the last big trade show we did. You were there. And we, uh, he, he had said to me th exactly what you're saying. He said, look, I, I don't really spend much time thinking about my website. I did 48 transactions last year and 43 of those were uh, referrals or past clients. And I said, well, where the rest of your business come? He said, oh, you know, a couple open houses that we've done. And, uh, but, but the, you know, 90% of this guy's business was coming from referrals. And I said, let me ask you a question. So you had, you got 42 referrals last year that, that you closed on. I know that you didn't have 50 people referred to you or 100 people referred to you. And and those other 58, well, they had 100 people referred to you, you did 42. How do you know those other 58 didn't go out there, start searching out who you were, and on your website and go, yeah. <laughs> right. I, actually, I've seen a couple other websites that look just like this guy's or there's nothing here that indicates this guy has any credibility like or holy cow, this website looks like it's from 1998. Like, how do you know that's not the case? And he, he kind of sat there for a second and yeah, I just kind of watched his, his, the realization in his head that he's like, I don't know. And this is a tough one, right? Because it's hard to quantify. Like you said, like, you, you don't know. You said it. I, I, I reinforce, you don't know, right? So you have to be taking that kind of, that look of like, all right, like Ken said, if my, you know, my business card got passed to somebody at a party and, and they went to my website, cause that's gonna be right there. They would go straight to the website, right? Or my name got passed and they Googled me. Like, wh what is that experience like? I think that's a really, really powerful kind of angle to look at this from, right? Not, I don't need my website because my business doesn't rely on it, but like, that it probably does more than you realize. It, it, it is huge. And and to your point there, like you, you cannot quantify the missed opportunity that you had there. And you may have a great business with those 42 transactions, but those other 58, what would that have been? What would that have turned into? And a lot of folks, especially in this economy, we're looking at, you know, where do we cut costs? Um, and certainly your, you know, your monthly expenses where you're looking at, you know, what do you have on an ongoing monthly expense? A lot of people are looking at their website and saying, you know, do I need this? And uh, the answer is absolutely, without a doubt, yes, more so than you did 30 days ago um, because of that very thing. That people are at home, they're researching you online, and you have no idea if you cut that expense what, you know, what you're cutting out. Like you could be, you could be what do they say, uh, cutting off your nose to save your face or something along those lines. But you could be doing that very same thing if you're looking at your budgets and saying, you know, ah, the website's not that important to me. Um, I think it's critically important and now more than ever. And just to kind of reinforce that whole SEO component of it, and if I didn't say that earlier, SEO is a search engine optimization component. It was big years ago and, and it still can be um, a good piece of your business if you do well, it right. Yeah, only, in a, only in a highly targeted niche environment is my belief. Yeah, absolutely. Today, today, right, like in, in, in Homes for Sale in Seattle or Atlanta or or e even today when we start to get into like neighborhood stuff in some of these bigger cities, so like Wallingford, Seattle, they are dominated by a couple of things, ads, right? Or the big boys, the, the Zillow's, the Trulia's, the Realtor.com, some of the bigger brokerages or the more tech focused brokerages like Redfin, but like those guys are spending millions of dollars to get on the first page, Ken, right? For you know, these more generic terms. So unless you're going into a really, really good niche, is my opinion, it's it's almost impossible today to be, you know, focusing my website efforts on search engine optimization. Really <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, th that ship has sailed. If you, if you were in this game a few years ago, there might have been some of those opportunities for you to be able to yeah, take advantage of some of those longer tail search terms or some niches. And again, I'm happy to visit with anyone who thinks that they may have a niche that you know we can try and hit from an SEO or an ads perspective. But the reality is I did this Google search for Atlanta homes for sale earlier today, and there are 82.5 million web pages indexed for Atlanta homes for sale. And you know what we talk about is like 
position one, two, and three on the home page, right? Like what's going to make your website stand out over 82.5 million other web pages? You're going to have to do a ton of work to make that happen. And the reality is that most of us are wearing so many hats that, you know, the SEO hat is probably the one that we least like putting on. And I think we'll see in some of the examples later, you know, we talk about blogging and all these things you're supposed to do to build that online presence. The reality is people don't do it. So my suggestion would be if you're not 100% all in on this, um, it's probably a strategy that you should forego and think about your website for credibility, not necessarily from a search engine perspective. And the ads too. I mean, if we look at what it costs to run that ad, that Ashton Woods and EXP ads there, that's costing a fortune. And I don't know what it is in, in your market in, Seattle, in, in Bellingham and Seattle area, but like here, that could be four, five, six dollars per click to your website. Yeah. That's huge. That's, I mean, you have to have big dollars to play in that game. So, and not to beat a dead horse here, if you approach this from a credibility perspective, not from like a lead generation perspective and, and strangers on the other side of the internet, but reinforcing those relationships that you already have, maybe using it as a tool to, to engage with your sphere. So um, I know some agents here in Orlando that we work with when, um, you know, they're doing uh, their Thanksgiving pie day, the, the lead capture form is on their website, right? So they're constantly driving everything that they do over the course of the year. They're driving people back to a page on their website. And then, you know, every once in a while, somebody says, oh yeah, my neighbor's looking to sell their house. And then the website is top of mind. So if you're using that website as a credibility tool and using that to influence your sphere, I think you're much more successful. The other thing too is, is if you were running ads, because we, we have um, lots of clients that, that, you know, we manage ad budgets for and we are driving people to those websites. Th those people generally come into the site, like if you were to click on any one of these ads, I'm going to be right in seeing homes, probably on our next point on a map-based search, right? Like I'm going to be in there um, getting what I wanted. But as, as that agent then starts to, to follow up with me, try to convert me from this random ass person that just went online and typed Atlanta Homes for Sale into an actual client, right? That website experience, what's on there, how it speaks to them, the, the credibility I'm building through uh, my, my testimonials or, or the stories that I share about the clients that I've helped, like those things start to reinforce to that person I spent six bucks for their click or ultimately probably spent sixty dollars for their lead um those other aspects of the website help take that person from being random ass joe joe visitor right to to my client so um even when you can play in this game the 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 design of your website the, the way it speaks to people the the emotions it brings out in them the credibility that it lends to you that stuff all factors in even if i can get them there because i just dropped some money to to you know, to drive them there. Yeah, that that's huge. And we see so many people, and I don't want to get too deep into like analytics. We see so many people that'll have an 80 or 90% bounce rate on their website, meaning people that just hit the page and then click the back button because it wasn't engaging to them. They jump into the ads game. And if you want to play in that space, you need to make sure that that is tight. Like your website has got a, you know, a 20, 25% bounce rate so that you can maximize every dollar you spend. And just uh, not to pick on anyone here, with it, we'll make this the safe zone. This, um, this, this second ad here, this for this EXP agent, they've they're actually just putting it. Uh, this link goes to the EXP website and then their agent profile page. So if Kurt paid for this ad, the chance of that agent being able to like just go somewhere else on the EXP website and bump into another agent, um, maybe in a home search or any of those other things that might be on the website there's a very high likelihood that this guy could be wasting his dollars and giving the leads to somebody else in his organization. So if you're going to do ads, get it on point. Um, Bob, you said your team does ad management. Yeah, but I mean, look, we do. And, and yeah. there's, there's plenty of highly qualified people in our industry that run it. If this feels like he's running his own ads, he just doesn't Absolutely. know what the proper thing to do here is, right? Absolutely. And and we don't run ads. We advise and we would refer out to someone. But if your team does, like talk to Bob's group like that, this is super expensive and you can you can burn thousands of dollars a month and not even realize what's happening. And of course, at the, the end first, of it, you, the first ahead. bad mistake that I ever made, like financially um, in this industry was we set up like and this was pre Google days. They used to have a thing called Overture that that kind of fed Yahoo. And I can remember the first time that we like didn't really know what we were doing as we were getting started. And, and we got like a thousand dollar bill, which for us way back in, you know, 2003 or two or whatever it was, was like, oh my God, like what just happened? It was like overnight, right? We like, so yeah, just 
don't run your own Google ads, guys. Like th that's a FISBO situation, right? Like why would <laughs> exactly. you do that? Exactly, exactly. So the next thing that, especially if you're running ads and in the, the kind of credibility uh, positioning of your website, I think probably you need two things on your website. You need property search and you need the ability to capture seller leads, right? I mean, you wanna work with buyers, you wanna work with sellers. Maybe you decide that you only wanna work with one or the other, that's totally fine. But these are like your biggest lead magnets. And if we look at the big boys that have really kind of taken control of the search um, results and uh, really the real estate, so to speak, uh, on our potential customer cell phones and their mind share of like who to go look for if you're looking for a house is Zillow, Realtor.com and Trulia, right? And they have an expectation of what the search experience is going to be like and your website needs to have that same level of experience or they're going to bail. They're going to go to Zillow, they're going to go to Trulia, they're going to go to Redfin, they're going to go to all these other places. So you need to have a very robust based property search. And as close that you can get it to a Zillow type experience, the more successful you're going to be in being the website of choice for your potential customer um, on, on the buying side of the deal. Here's why, Ken, here's why I think this is like such a big deal that you kind of have to get to par, right? What the internet knows when your clients start looking for real estate, right? When your own your own people in your own sphere and your own database, when when somebody's out there Googling and landing on your website and becoming a lead, like if you think that the fact they got to your site and that or they they came from your database and they're looking at properties on your website right now it is the last place they're gonna go, you are sorely mistaken. Okay, like I, I love shoes. It's like my weakness. And so <laughs> um, guess what? The internet knows I love shoes. Okay, and so everywhere I go, there's shoe ads. And when your clients start to kind of warm up, right? When they start going online to figure out what their house is worth, when they start looking at properties, even though they're they're nine to twelve months away from from buying or, or two years away from buying, but they just the internet knows. Okay, so what happens is those people's feeds, their apps, the 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 websites they they visit, they start to become overwhelmed by real estate ads from places like Zillow and Redfin and Trulia and Realtor.com and Estately and, and any brokerage that's playing in this game, they start to get ads from all these other places and they're continually being, you know, kind of enticed, right? To come over and, and have that same experience they were doing on your website over here. So mm -hmm. you have to at least be, you know, at par or close to par with some of these other places that they could be doing that. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better. If you do not have a map based search and it's not intuitive and easy to use, um, you're basically forcing your visitor over to one of the other portals where they're being bombarded with other agents. They potentially could inquire about a listing and start working directly with another agent. Um, and you don't want that. So visit your website, look at it from a, a potential customer's perspective. Does it tell a story? Who is it about? And then actually use your website, like go do a search. Is it easy? Is it intuitive? Are the neighborhoods right? Are the, the statistics right? Are the prices right? Like do, do some investigative work on your own website and make sure that you have a good experience as it relates to search. And you know, yeah. that kind of, yeah, go ahead. The, 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 well, the, 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 the flip side here, right, is um, instead of map, like, because I think, look, you have properties, you have the ability for consumers to find listings on your website. That's like the baseline, right? And I, hopefully everybody's at the baseline. And then there's like, there's par, which is like this map based. The, the alternative would be lists, right? Just like lists of homes. Somebody lands on homes for sale in Seattle and they just see a list of properties. There's no kind of geography element there, right? And for years, by the way, um, Back in the day when we had our, you know, we were a powerhouse generating that you did it that way on lists. Mm -hmm. uh, the map technology just wasn't what it was, you know, with with Google Maps and all these crazy things that we can API into and lay our listings over. And um, but the problem with that is so for years, real estate companies and, and the tech vendors built these things around the idea of landing people on lists of properties. And today that that's that's not good enough anymore. Um, people that land on lists go, I, what? I, I don't know where any of these houses are at, right? And <laughs> they can't easily get to the map. Some of them won't even try to figure out where that map button is, right? They'll just yep. go back to Google and go to the next site. Or so, you know, you have to make, you have to just 
this is really a keeping up with the times kind of thing. And if you're somebody that hasn't looked at your website for six, eight, ten years, it could be that you know, ten years ago you had kind of the best practice for the for the day, but that might no longer be the case. Yeah, that might not work anymore. And you know that that it, it goes to the credibility piece too. So even if we're talking about potentially getting a listing, let's say you don't work with buyers, so you don't want to work with buyers, you're a listing only agent. Um, you should probably be collecting those leads and referring them out. But let's say your listing's only agent and you don't think that you need the property search. Your potential seller is coming to the website to evaluate you and your tech stack, right? They're going to be looking at your technology. And if, you, if you're if you displaying to them that your technology is, is five, six, seven years behind, they may make a decision not to engage with you. So even if you're not expecting to get buyer's leads from your website, these tools need to be in place because potential uh, sellers and, and anyone really looking at your website are expecting them. Again, think um, about that person that was referred to you that doesn't really want to reach out to you yet, but they'd like to start looking at listings. And so they got your business card. So they head to your website, right? Like if it's not an experience they like, that they're, they're, you don't want them out at Zillow or Redfin. And now they're out there kind of in the shark's pond, right? Like those companies are just dying to turn them into a lead for some agent that's not you. That's it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, and it, 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 this is a requirement on your website uh, and even like I said even if you're not working with the, with buyers even sellers you need to have it on there so that they're not lost in the shark pond and that kind of brings me over into the next point um, you know if you are working with sellers or even if you're not it's expected of you that you have some sort of home evaluation or market report um, tool on your website and I see so many agents that will build their website that says you know what's my home worth and to me, that's like an instant gratification type thing, right? Like they're, they're expecting to get some sort of number, like a Zestimate type thing um, right away. And most websites don't have that functionality, right? A lot of those websites, when you push fill out the form that says, what's my home worth? Um, the experience is, thank you for your information. We'll get back to you soon. And in theory, the agent gets an email that says, you know, hey, Bob's looking for a price on his home. Um, and now the agent has to go do a CMA or, or, or try and get some data over to Bob. Reality is met mo a lot of the times the agent doesn't actually act on that, gets busy or responds to that email days later. And the, agent, the, the customer is looking for an instant gratification. And to me, how much is your home worth is a pretty big buy uh, selling signal, right? It's a signal that like these people may potentially be ready, but a lot of times they're not. A lot of times they're just curious about like how much is their home worth um, today. They may have just closed on it, you know, a few months ago, and they want to see if it went up in value. The reality is this: a lot of agents look at this as like an instant signal that these people are ready to go. And more often than not, they're just curious. And if you can get them involved in some sort of market report that gives them frequent touches, and have the ability to like be in front of them as shifts in the market happen. Um, and be that trusted resource, they're much more likely to list with you in the future. Very few people who fill out that, you know, what's my home worth form is ready to list their house today. These people hey. need to be nurtured. Hey, yeah. th this is easily inside of Ben's business. And I work with, I, I train all of his teams on, on utilizing technology. This is easily the best tool that, that, that Ben's teams deploy. I, I, a lot of people that listen to these often can, you, you maybe know, my, my mom's a real estate agent. Um, a couple of times a month, look, she has a thousand people right now that get a market report from her a couple of times every single month. And, and many of you guys have databases, by the way, that, that are big enough that you could easily have a thousand people that were receiving market data from you about what's selling and what's happening right around their house. Okay. Three, three or four times a month, she gets a response from one of those that's, that's basically akin to a come list me call. Right, where the email says, hey, Dale, thanks so much. You've been keeping us updated. We love these market reports. We're ready to, to you know, we're thinking about getting ready to sell. We're wondering if you'd come out to our house and, and talk to us about what that looked like. Like, I'm not even joking. Those are the types of emails. And she posts them in Brevity Masterminds every once in a while. Not all of them, because I asked her mom, can you back off a little bit? But uh, <laughs> she loves these things, guys. Like, here's the, here, this is why, like right now, in this kind of new economy, this this world, this really uncertain world we're in right now, these are invaluable to your clients, okay? These start to craft the story for your clients of what's actually happening around their house. It's not the national news story that's doom and gloom and everything. Some of our markets are still 
doing okay, right? Some There's still stuff happening. There's still people buying and selling houses in some of our markets right now. And so to let our clients know what's going on, because here's what happens if you don't, okay? Every day, somebody drives home from work in one of your in one of your neighborhoods and they drive by a house and and yesterday that house was at a you know a for sale sign on it and today there's a sold sign now if you guys can see me i have my cell phone in my hand which you all probably do too half of you are probably on it right now um <laughs> they, they pull over to the side of the road some of them don't even get home and they like whip that cell phone out and they're gonna go find out what that house sold for <clears throat> if they can't do it from you if they can't go to your market report pull that thing up and be like all right what What's happening here? What did that house across the street sell for? And this this area pulse that Ken's showing you guys right here that Brandco's used that part of their web stack, um, it does that. Somebody can pull that thing up and right away go, oh, yep, neighbor's house just sold for 385. Here's what happens if they can't get that information from you. Zillow's proof, by the way, that they want that information, they want it now, okay? They go on the internet. Some of them go to Zillow, some of them go to Google and they they type, you know, what did the house, what did one, two, three Main Street sell for? Whatever they do, if they're not doing it directly back to you, you send them on a real estate speed dating event. You're basically saying to your client, look, I'm not giving you this information, go find it somewhere else. And they're like, okay, sweet, I'm gonna go speed date on Google. And oh, no, look, I found this agent, he's willing to give me this information. And ooh, he's, he's got sexy marketing photos. And ooh, look at that, he spends a lot on budget, on, on marketing, right? He's got a big old marketing wallet. Like they're gonna find a sexier agent than you. Okay, so we can't send our clients on a real estate speed dating event. Like, and like right now, guys, we are seeing an increase in the amount of people that are visiting real estate websites. We're seeing an increase in the number of clients who are opening these market reports and the number of seller leads that are opening these market reports. Ken, like this is vital, I believe. If you don't have this tool in your belt today, like please go find it like as fast as possible. Absolutely. And and you mentioned this is uh, Area Pulse. We we include that on our websites, but you can buy that standalone too. So like if your website is rocking and rolling, like everything that we're talking about today is on lock. Um, if you jump over to areapulse.com, you can pick it up too. It's less than a hundred bucks. I don't know exactly how much it is. It might be 50, 60 bucks, but it's incredibly valuable. And what's so great about this is that your consumers will set themselves up on it. And it just reaches out to them on a periodic basis and keeps them up to date. And like Bob said, this is when they drop back into your funnel and said, hey, now's the time. Um, and you don't even know it. It's just working in the background. And all of a sudden, that person that may have filled that form out six months ago, six years ago, is finally ready to sell. Um, and you've been the agent that's been keeping in touch with them. Very little work on your behalf. So this, yeah, this is critical. If you don't have it, go get it. Um, the last piece, which is really important to this new economy, and, and we're hearing a lot of the uh, agents that are with uh, larger brokerages where, where there's lots of conversations about who owns the data. And, you know, we know that data is valuable and data is important. Um, and we see that, you know, companies like Trulia and Zillow and, and Realtor.com, right, they're just big data houses. And we see what that's done to, to our market and, and to the real estate business in general. You need to be thinking about that on your website as well. And I want everyone to kind of take a step back and think about who owns your website. If you're using your broker's website and you decide that you want to go from broker A to broker B, what happens to your website when you do that? Do you lose it? Do you lose any search engine Google juice that you've built over the years? Does it move with you? Um, these questions are sometimes hard to ask. So you may want to consult with someone and, and, and really do an evaluation on how that would transition but you need to own your website. To me, it's one of the most important, it's a 24 seven salesperson that's working on your behalf. You can't trust that to um, you know, any of the changes in your business that you need to make being held hostage to your website, being you know, held by your brokerage or your franchise. You should own your website. And I'll give you a little example of this. I was, I was consulting with a, a potential client yesterday and uh, they told me their domain name is farangroup.com. And when I typed that in, it actually forwarded over to farangroup.kw.com. And if your website does this, you probably do not own that website or you not set it up properly. Like if this happens, shoot me an email and we'll work through that together to see if it's just not set up properly. You probably don't own that website. And in this case, whatever is before the .com, that's what gets the Google juice. So if you are playing the search engine game, and you're, you're trying to get folks from the other side of the internet there, or you're just blogging, trying to build local credibility, um, you're giving that away if your domain name is not up, set up properly, or you're using some of these bigger you know, website tools that are not necessarily owned by you, but they're owned by the brokerages. 
So look at your website, make sure that, you know, if you decide that you want to change from company A to company B, you can, and that you own that Google juice that you're working so hard to build if that's the strategy that you're going after. Agreed. All right. So, um, while yeah, I was looking uh, through the doing. notes for sure. So, you know, basically what we're, what we're looking at, um, is owning your website, building it as a story for potential clients, making your website about your clients, not necessarily about you, giving them the right tools, whether they're going to use them or not, or they're just using them as a, as a, um, a guide for whether or not you're a legit real estate agent, having all those things in place is what you need today on a website. So what I'd like to do um, is jump over to my uh, Google Chrome here, and I pulled up some websites from folks that... You never know, and so we're going live here. We never know, like, are these people on the call? They um, might be. Way, Safe Ken, zone. Ken got to look at these in advance. I haven't seen these guys, so you're gonna be getting <laughs> my kind of un... Like, I got a couple friends I see some names on here. They know I'm pretty unfiltered. You're going to get my unfiltered opinion on some of these websites here. <laughs> All right. I was just going to ask you, do we need to be politically correct about it, or should we just be straight shooting? I'm just going to shoot them straight. If you want to play the politically correct side, I'm, I'm okay with that. You can maybe soften some no, of the edges of the no. things I'm about to say. <laughs> no, I think we should be brutally honest. And if that makes anybody uncomfortable, um, uh, you've been I don't even know what to say. Yeah, you've been warned. There you go. So, yeah, this is a safe... This is a safe is zone, a and, and anyone who did contribute and volunteered to let us review your website, I want to thank you for that because I think this is where the learning really happens is looking at live websites. And um, anyone that we're using as a demo here, I'm happy to meet with you offline to correct some of these things um, and work together to make sure that we get all your stuff locked down. So let's take a look at the first one here. Um, and this is for regroup properties. So what do you think about this site, Bob? Um, I think it looks a little bit aged. Like the first thing I wonder is like, well, it's obviously not responsive, right? It's it's like it's locked in on its. It just looks aged to me, um, and I can see that maybe it was built for a mobile experience. Although even when you get to that point, you realize it's not built for a mobile experience. Um, the the first thing, I, like, there's not much of a story here. I the the brand is a little bit like. Well, I don't know what they stand for or what their what their deal is. I guess I could read their philosophy here to try to, um, you know, it, it just feels very <laughs> blah to me. I, I don't know. Yeah, I so I'm gonna agree with you. So you know, Bob mentioned the website's not responsive. Uh, you absolutely have to have a responsive website, meaning that regardless of whether you're looking at it on a laptop screen, your phone screen, any device, it's gonna have a good experience. Um, and I don't know if you noticed that there, I just kind of slid this window down. You can do this test on your website, open it up in Chrome, slide it over like this, and you'll be able to tell if the website responds or not. We can see the navigation responded. See how it jumped down to a couple of lines when we did that, but none of the rest of the website responded. And you have to scroll left and right in order to be able to view that site. So that's really important. You know, we were talking about response to websites four or five years ago. Um, I guess some people, you know, maybe just didn't get the memo, but you got to look at this. The other thing that I'm looking at when I see this website, it's bragging. It's all about them, right? There's nothing about what they will help you do as a customer, right? So we've got all these sold listings here, why the group, their selling plan, like it's all about them. There's not a whole lot going on that's positioning any of these property owners or homeowners as the hero in the story. And also it's not really emotional. Like this is all like numbers, dollars and cents. And as real estate agents and professionals, like we're numbers people, we're dollars and cents people. But remember, this is probably an emotional decision, an emotional purchase for the people that you're interacting with. So there's some things that we definitely have to fix on this website. Um, there's no property search. Uh, there's no home value. There's really there's no, no like, tools call, here. There's no call to action, right? It's yeah. like, when I get here, I'm not exactly sure what I would want to do. I mean, I guess if I was coming here to look for listings, I don't know, I'd probably try to hit that properties tab up top. But only, that's only because I've looked at a million real estate websites, right? And even that doesn't get, that gives, shows me everything they sold. Like, where the hell are, oops, sorry. And there, there it is. So Ken was able to navigate <laughs> there because Ken knows, you know, he's just like me, has seen thousands of websites. Um, it's not map-based, right? It's, um, you know, I, I, I'm questioning whether I'm even, it, it's, so the other thing I see here is that that search is um, embedded in here, which means he has no ability to do, any kind of links 
that would direct me to see as you make the search, as you navigate in there, that URL stays exactly the same, which means he could not do, he, could, he couldn't run Google ads to this site um, ever because you wouldn't be able to get those deep links needed to, to return a result for like Atlanta homes for sale, for example. Um, so, I mean, there's a, there's a lot, go back to that homepage for a second. The, the things, so he tries to build some credibility in there. I think it's important to call out the bottom there. Do, are those links? Can you They're scroll not. over? They're not. Like, I just, you know, what is that, right? And first off, it's it just visually, it's kind of jarring, but like, what is that stuff, right? Oh, he was on Bravo front door. What does that even mean? Like, um, I, I, you see them trying to bring the credibility in there, but mm -hmm. it, it feels strange. Like, what what exactly like when we get it maybe right or i kind of understand where they're going there but i don't know that that i don't know that that has much meaning to anybody that's just kind of landing here yeah it's kind of like the as seen t on tv little you know things that you see at the grocery store or at walmart right like that doesn't really lend credibility unless there's a story that goes behind it so um i think there needs to be more told about that and it could be very valuable um, the other thing that I noticed here, actually, when I clicked on the Facebook link, um, here's how I look at social media, and this is not our topic for today, but I look at social media as a traffic source to our website, like it brings people to our website. It should never take people away from our website. So if you have social media on your site, it definitely should um, either be, uh, if it's there and there is a link to it, it needs to open in a new window. So when I just clicked on Facebook here, it, it didn't open in a new window. So I'm now completely off of that website. And, you know, I can, I got some messages here, right? So now I'm looking <laughs> over at yeah, my minions gone. post. I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, can you like scroll down on that that page for just a second? That that other Facebook page there. Yeah. I just want to see like, what, what if I was like, oh, I wonder what these guys are up to. And I went and I scrolled down. Like, what's the last thing that was posted? Like, maybe there's never been anything. January 24th. And then, and then previous to that, what was the last thing that was posted? Like January twenty. So, but they haven't. Did they? Are they out of business? Like they haven't posted anything in two months. What's going on? Like things must be slow for them. And previous to that, they there was November. It'd been two months before that. So, like sometimes we think it's a good idea to send people over to these places, but these places are like dusty ghost towns, right? <laughs> right. Uh, and this one's kind of you know she's they're not doing a bad job here. They they get some every once in a while, but it's been two months, right? right. It's feeling like a dusty ghost town over there right now yeah and i think the effort to get that person to your website whatever that was whether that was a past business card a google search a referral um, a mailing that you put out there um you got them where you want them where your lead capture mechanism is if somebody here you know i don't know what the like the actual conversion rates are on this contact us button but probably not as good as it would be um, off of your website so keep them there if you possibly can all right, so uh, if Re Ari Group's on the call, um, definitely follow up with us afterwards. We'll give you some, uh, obviously you got some tips here, but we'll give you some advice on how to fix some of those things so that you can uh, make this site a little bit more effective for you. Okay, uh, I wanna let's... do, do you mind if I just like totally take you off? I, I wanna do, yeah. Samantha's on the call and she just said, hey, do, like if you wanna do my site and I just pulled up, let's do her site, do you mind? Sure, yeah, what is it? Okay, so it's samiamhouses.com. Okay, I love the Sam I am. Houses.com, easy to remember. So if you and I were to bump shopping carts at the grocery store, six feet away, of course, um, and you said just visit samiamhouses.com, I probably would remember that. So that's important. If you're if you're um, looking at domain names and part of your reevaluation here is getting that domain name uh, set up, think about that. Some of these other domain names that we have here, not so easy to remember, but I love that one. That's pretty easy to remember. All right, well, so I mean, Sam I am the, Houses. The immediacy of it is like, the first, okay, so I always look at a website, and I'll close my eyes and I'll just open my eyes the first thing I see on this page when I open my eyes is about me. Yep. I mean, it just is like everybody close your eyes and just open them up. It, that that red line is just drawing me to like about Samantha, and mm -hmm. which you know gets to our our first or second point, right? Like this is about her. And listen, um, do they care, right? Like, do they care right now about you? I guess that we're we're hoping they do because that's what this is about. A um, couple other things I'd say right away, like what's the call to action here? Um, the 411, is it, maybe it's find my house, but I kind of got to know where to go. Um, one thing that happens 
just naturally is we go to that first thing we see and then we move down. So you, if we, we've done a lot of like mapping of the way people look at, at websites. And so what they would do here is they would hit about me and then they, their eyes would be driven down. Now, if we were lucky enough to capture their attention with what they saw as they went down, maybe, maybe they would go, you know, to try to find that call to action. Um, it's it's hard to see in here what that call to action is, right? Now, as as we scroll down, there's a contact me. That could be there's a click here, um, right? So there are a couple calls to action there. I'm slightly confused by what that that right hand call to action for click here would have gotten me. Um, yeah, what is what is, I do not like like I'm not sure what that gets me. Um, Okay, so it gets me a video. Like, I, I think the video is, is good, but again, that's it's just a weird call to action there. It, it seems slightly kind of out of place. I'm just not sure why I would do it, right? Um, if we think about like two people coming here, one being a buyer, one being a seller, we have to have obvious calls to action, I believe, for those people when they land here. Either, you know, see what my house is worth or, or get a market report for my for my area or, or search for listings and you know she's find your home right again we've looked at a lot of these sites ken so we know where that find your home is there kind of in the navigation i think um that there's something that concerns me a little bit about this site is most people are conditioned that navigation's in one of two places it's at the top or it's along the side and this one kind of places the navigation in a just an uncomfortable position Right, it's where it's kind of halfway down the page. What else are you picking up off of here, Ken? For sure, that was actually the first thing that I noticed is that the navigation's a little bit further down. So I was expecting these three photos to be called actions, and they're not. Um, I, the upper right-hand corner is premium real estate. Like this is where your phone number and contact information should be. Pretty much every website out there from you know your dentist to a restaurant to our website is going to have the phone number and contact information in the upper right. You should follow that behavior because we're conditioned for that to be there. Having your blog is not all that exciting to me. Um, and your blog feed, let's see how up to date you are. Uh, we got first day of spring, March 20th. So like A for effort on blogging. It looks like you oh, are using, what's that? That's, year. That's 2019. Oh man, good catch. <laughs> that would have been great if it, it just said March 20th and didn't have the year on it because we would have thought it was a home run. Uh, the other thing is, so you're using Blogger, you're not getting uh, as good a SEO here because your post is just this random number, uh, which doesn't do a whole lot of good for you. I'm noticing the copyright on your website is 2013, uh, which means that you built this website now seven years ago. So keep that up to date. Um, find your home. Uh, you've got an iframe of your property search, meaning that you see I'm scrolling out here, but I also have to scroll inside of here if I want to do something. That's a really bad experience on a desktop, but it's even worse on a mobile device. Like you have this, you know, double scrolling thing. Um, so we definitely have to work on that. You've got some social proof and testimonials inside here, but there's another website being framed into this website. And I would definitely would look at, you know, hey, maybe this website's better. Maybe this is your, this is the website that you use. It looks like it's responsive. It's got a cool video there. I'd be curious about that. So I definitely take a look and dig into that, figure out what that is. All right, move on. What do you got next? You got, you got um, a couple more up there, right? Yeah, so we're right. We got a couple more minutes. Should we, should we just keep going? How are you doing on time? I'll tell you what, man. I, I say, listen, guys, I, we want to be respectful of your time. So if you got to go, we totally understand. But we still have a couple hundred people here, Ken. So let's just keep going. If you've got the time, I've got some more free time to, to kind of roll over the, the top of the hour here and, and take a look at a couple more of these. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. Let's do this. So, um, I love, this one's a home inspector's website. I love the fact that the home inspector has a website because so many don't. I think that this is a very important part of our of our industry and our profession. And consumers are more comfortable when they can research for the home inspector is. I love that. Um, but what I notice on this website, it is responsive. However, sometimes when it's a do-it-yourself website, a FISBO website, um, you, you try to make things work and you notice here that the words are cut off. And that's because the way the website responds it only works on certain resolutions and certain screen dimensions, and we lose the whole text when we're looking at this on a wide screen. It's definitely something that you want to make sure that you don't do on your website. Look at it on a ton of different screens and make sure that doesn't happen. Um, 
I love that this guy in his header, he's got all this contact information, shows where he services. He's available pretty much every day from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Like there's some great stuff going on here. Um, but I'm a little concerned about like the credit card information, like right in the middle of his navigation here. So maybe there'd be a link or a button that said, you know, payments or something along those lines. Um, or maybe make that a little bit more discreet. Looks like there's a little character here that's out of place. Um, but call to actions are pr like pretty obvious. Like, what do you want to do on a home inspector, right? You want to schedule an inspection, and uh, yep. it brings you to a get in touch form. So I think I would probably change, get rid of this graphic. It doesn't need to be there. I'd probably change this get in touch form to, you know, tell us about your property and, and make it feel like they're actually scheduling that inspection right now. Really, what this is, is just a lead form going over to the inspector and, um, you know, make it feel like, you know, hey, tell us about the property. When would you like to get this done? That way, when... Um, Troy calls this person, he knows a little bit more about when the when the inspection, they'd like that to be done and what the address is and whatnot. All right, so it's good to see uh, some other folks on the call that aren't necessarily agents, but let's jump back into another agent here. Um, what do you think about this one? This one is a, um, a market leader website. So if you're working with a templated website, I know you have limitations. You may want to evaluate, like, you know, is that the right place for you? Because this is what happens when you're using one of those template sites. You don't have a lot of control over that. Um, you got any thoughts on this one, Bob? Well, so, I mean, the first thing that I would say is I, I get, it just feels very stark, right? Like, I, I don't see any of the agent's branding inside of this or any of their story. I mean, there's that little logo up in the top left-hand corner. But, you know, I, I, some some people that that I've worked with in the past that, have scenarios like this where they have that kind of templated concept what you what you need to be able to do then is is get a little bit um smarter with like that image for example so that image of this this you know kind of green belt area that that sky up there in the top right could totally hold you know her uh, delivering the dream of home ownership everywhere which is the ben kinney um you know team uh, mission right it's like th there's some some space on this this image to bring her branding into the site, even though she's working from a templated site. That'd be one of the first things. The call to action here, there is that search capability down below there. It's it's hard to see, it's hard to pick up. It's not, the, This is a rare site, by the way, Ken, that when I close my eyes and open my eyes, there, there's really nothing that jumps out at me. Like, yeah, that's a great point. The logo okay. maybe does a little bit, but like, that I, I'm always looking for, does my call to action jump out? Is it kind of the first thing I see when I've closed my eyes and then open them back up to look at this page? And this is a rare site that nothing really jumps out. So it failed the eyes closed test. I agree. Um, the, 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 I think it's the 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 point of this website obviously is to discover your dream home. I like that it connected to you, like it, it's back to the consumer, the visitor to the website, and it is getting a little bit emotional about being in the dreams, but that's completely lost. Like you barely see it uh, here, so you want to make sure that if you're going to be talking about discovering your dream home, let's make that really big across this hero section here, and then tell people what they were supposed to do here. Like we're making a big assumption that they understand what this magnifying glass is and that they can put cities or states as something in there without having to click. Um, the good use of the contact information in the upper right-hand corner, I like that. Um, we've got some navigation here that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll click on those in a minute. Uh, so this is one of the other kind of drawbacks to some of the templated websites out there if you don't have a whole lot of customization. You don't really have much to be able, you don't have a lot of control of what the center section looks like, but this is like great opportunity for that social proof, for the testimonials, for the the, the stories, um, and really bring the, about the emotional connection. If they bypass the, the main call to action here and they wanna learn more about you, um, that bulleted list is probably not gonna help. Um, let's see, we were looking at blogs before, so let's see, we got 2017. Listen, if you have not written a blog post in the last, I don't know, Bob, what would you say? Last four weeks, six weeks? Three, yeah, yeah. I was going to say three months at the very outside. But even okay. that, you know, yeah. when we went to that Facebook page, it feels dusty, you know? Yeah. So if you've not written a blog post in the in the last couple of months, like take the blogs off your homepage, take the link off of your website. It's okay. It's okay if you're not in the blogging game. Um, I know that, uh, you know, of all the things that you have to do on a daily basis, that might not be the one that, you know, gets done. So just take it off. So you're not advertising to people that, you know, there's cobwebs in your blog. Uh, let's take a look at property search here. 
map-based property search, very Zillow-like. You got the map on the left, the listings on the right, so I like that. Uh, my properties, got some active listings. If you do not have active listings, take the featured properties off your website. If you only have one, see if you can co-market with some other folks in your in your office um, so that it looks like that you have more than one listing. Most That's agents are gonna say, absolutely, you know, share my listings, as much exposure as I can. Um, what were you gonna say, Bob? Well, so if this was my website, or or like when we when we work with Brevity clients, like what we do is it doesn't become my properties, it becomes featured properties. And then we will backfill if you so say they had one listing, we will backfill listings from your office. You don't have to have permission to 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 display any listings on your website. Now you can't call them my properties, right? Or or my exclusive listings or something, but I would change the wording here and then I would backfill in, like Ken just said listings from somebody that agreed to co-market with you or just from my office the our idx you know the paperwork we sign allows us to to place our office listings on a page like this as long as we weren't calling it something like my properties or you know we can tweak that wording a little bit mm -hmm. for sure um let's see 2020 copyright on here i think that's probably maintained by market leader so that's good so i think this website it's a templated website and I think it's pretty obvious. Um, I think I closed one of the other ones that was another market leader website. It looked exactly the same except for the white was purple. Um, it, your consumers are fairly intelligent about this kind of stuff. It doesn't take very long. Um, you know, we had a couple hundred folks fill out their questionnaires here. Um, I clicked on maybe 15 or 20 and I, I ran into three or four market leader sites. So um, if you're trying to create a unique brand and you're trying to be different and separate yourself from everybody else, look at the platform that you're looking that, that you're using and make sure that it's something that um, you can customize and, and make look different than everybody else that's using that same platform. Um, I really like this one because the, the, the imagery in the background, uh, what are your thoughts on this site? Um. I'll just close my eyes and open them. I, so my, I'm, I am drawn slightly to the call to action, although I would probably try to make that white lettering and find my dream home a little bit more, make it pop a little bit more or something. But that is kind of where my eyes went. Mm -hmm. um, her name dominating the, uh, just yeah. feels a little bit off to me. Like it's dominating that page. But when I opened my eyes, there was, it was, I was competing between her name and, and company name and then the actual call to action there. Mm -hmm. My brain's probably conditioned to look for the button, but that that name just screams off the top of this page. Um, I, I would be curious, like kind of beyond like the name, her name, like what else does her bit, what else represents her business here? And I don't get a sense for that at all, other than, you know, I'm a, I don't know what even city, I don't know Cincinnati or what city this is, but um, Nashville. Okay, I I might. You know, if I if I knew the area, I might recognize that's what this is. I just don't. But I, it it's hard for me to kind of get a sense of where she does business, what what you know what her business is about, right? It it feels like she could be just any other real estate agent. Her name just happens to be Maria. Mm -hmm. So this is a simple fix. Like I think the site looks very good. It's like aesthetically pleasing. You got a great picture of the Nashville skyline in the background. Um, Maria, if you're on the call, just change this top, this this one title here, and I think you would overcome everything that Bob was just talking about. And you could say, find your Nashville dream home, right? And then the button here that says, you know, start now or get started or something along those lines, and you would overcome all of those objections that um, Bob kind of had there pretty simply. Um, as far as the navigation is concerned, the featured properties I think are pretty heavy, like they're listed before the other things. So I'm hoping that you have a lot of featured properties here. Let's take a look at that. Um, let's see. So this is using, looks like it might be IDX Broker. And we have one listing. So backfill some listings there for sure. Uh, copyright 2020. The look and feel of the website changed a little bit when I moved into that page. So let's see if that happens on some of the other pages. Take a look at Brentwood, did the same thing. It's using the IDX page. Might be diverse solutions too, I'd have to look at that. Contact that me. Is diverse. Let's see, contact me. She doesn't have, she, she is missing kind of that obvious contact information that we yeah, talked about, right? right kind corner. of being there For without sure. me having to come into this. You guys, yep. like when, 
look, if somebody's really setting out to to kind of go, you know, find Mario's phone number, they're they're probably going to find it, and that contact me is probably enough. But you know, every every second, every additional click, um, you know, th- those things add up, right? And over a year, even if she lost two or three people who were like, oh, I can't find her number, I don't know, you know, let me just Google some <laughs> agent in, in Nashville, right? Like, um, those things add up every second and every click. So for any one person, it might not seem like a big deal, but when you start to realize, you know, who some of these people are, they don't know you very well. Um, just every extra thing we make them do is a challenge. You know, when I was looking at this, that's a really good point. And it, speaking of challenging, your home search is, especially on this one being the main call to action, needs to be really easy and obvious. You've got that, it, it, there's a limited amount of patience that people have. I didn't even realize that this was the home search when I first clicked on it. Like this, it, this didn't stand out to me enough to know that, that I needed to type, you know, an address or a city or state here, because it was just kind of in the story of the home page. So you could maybe change the background here, and I think that would help. I would stop this typing because that's super distracting at a point in time when they're like really supposed to be zeroed in on an activity that they should be doing. They shouldn't be paying attention to this. Um, and I definitely would work on this this home search area a little bit because that, to me, when I first looked at it, it wasn't even obvious. Um, I thought that was just typing, and I'm looking at other things, and I and I moved on. Um, she's got this this uh, statistics and proof down here, which I think is really cool. Um, you might want to say instead of clients, you might want to say um, uh, I don't know if you want to say families there, but you might like want to make this a little bit more personal so that they're not necessarily you know uh, a transaction. Sounds very transactional. Um, five hundred plus uh, you know um, homes. Five hundred plus clients. Um, you know dr- dreams dreams delivered or something. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, this is the kind of stuff that Ken's done with with our Ben Kinney's teams, right? Is is really like getting in and looking at the words and figuring out like how do we change this? Because listen, we we did the same thing, right? Like we touted how many houses we sell and and how many how many dollars we spend and all, all this stuff, right? But when you start to just really purposely look at this from the perspective of let's make it about them you start to figure out ways to turn these things, you know, kind of on their head. Yep, absolutely. And it's the, they're so subtle. I think we talked about it a little bit earlier. Sometimes they're so subtle, but they make a big difference in your bounce rate, your stickiness and your conversion rate, which are all the things that we care about. So they're big deals, big deal. Um, let's see here. So we got 2017 is the copyright on here. We need to update that. This is cool as seen on the American dream and it does open in a new window, which is awesome. However, there's nothing there. It's a 404 page. So you want to work on that. Um, let's see here. I know we still have a ton of people on the call, Bob. I, I think what we need to do is um, uh, basically, I, he, he, here's what we're offering. Um, on this particular call, we were able to get through about five or six websites. I'm seeing, I can't even count how many folks yeah, have asked us to do. There's 40 people that have thrown their website address in Yeah, here, so. yeah. And <laughs> And I tried, yeah, exactly. So this is like this is a great learning experience for all of us. And I know that we can't get through all of them. But what I do want to offer is that we will do an audit just like we're doing now for every single person on this call. There's no obligation, no charge. If you text the word audit to five nine five five nine audit to five nine five five nine we will do a one-on-one audit with you it'll take 10 or 15 minutes we'll go through your website um you know no obligation and basically what we want to do is do the exact same thing that we're doing for these websites live in the group but do it for you one-on-one and hopefully you'll have your tough skin on and and um be open to making some changes to your site and um i think this is the best way to get through all of these because there's no way that we're going to get through the 30 or 40 people here that have put their urls in. and i'd love to because it's a great learning experience but i don't think they're going to be able to get through them all so listen guys um Go get your audit done, okay? And listen, if you're a, um, a lot, some of you on this call may be Brivity clients. We, we partner with Brandco. They're, they're our exclusive partner now for doing like custom design work on um, on our Brivity website. So if you guys have a Brivity site, get it audited by Ken. I, I saw a couple people, there was two, at least two I saw that said, we have a Brivity site and we were we, like, we were gonna take this time where we're kind of locked in our house over the next two weeks to, to work on our website. Yeah, Ken's team can help you 
absolutely with that. And they can work on any of these different, you know, things you guys have out there and help you um, find a plan, you know, um, decide how you want to approach your site. Sometimes it's even like, God, these two things you got to do now, you know, here's some suggestions that you can work on over the next couple of months, but um, get out there, like take advantage of his, their 20 years of experience doing this and, and, and realizing how these things have changed and what it means that our website's, you know, 10 years old versus five years old, they know what to look for, right? They can go in there and say, okay, so market leader site, we know what the, you know, it's a, it's a, this site, it's a, that site. We, if this is a seven year old site, we know that generally these are going to be the things. So they're really good at this. They do it all day long. Um, and like I said, we, um, we take our own medicine here. So Ken's done this a number of times with, with, you know, Ben's teams and, and it's, it's something that we're constantly working on tweaking and trying to refine. It, it's, it's a moving target, but we just keep, keep taking shots at it. Absolutely. Um, and let's see. So we've got some folks that signed up for the audit. That's awesome. Uh, we will um, send a form over to you and schedule that out in the next couple of days. Um, you're recording this, right, Bob? Uh, yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. So some folks that were asking about that will definitely share the recording. Um, let's see. I think that covers it. You got anything else? Uh, wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> All no, right. man, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's let these guys get back to, to working on their business. Ken, I appreciate you having you here, man. Um, I always enjoy our, our time together. We'll do this again soon on, on some topic or another. Listen, you guys get back, um, you know, finish up your, your week strong here. On behalf of Mikey and Samantha and some of the people behind the scenes that make this thing happen, he's Ken. I'm Bob. You guys have an awesome day. And seriously, wash your hands. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Appreciate you, Ken. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. You, you too. Bye, everybody. Bye.